Hey, Adam here from Tested with another one day build. This one inspired by a new friendship I made on Twitter. I know we live in a complicated time where social media has not necessarily turned out to be the unalloyed boon to mankind that it once promised, but there are still a lot of reasons to love Twitter. Most of all for me because of the friendships that I have made by being on Twitter. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Eric Idle of Spamalot and Monty Python fame tweeted out to the world that he had a guitar case that was not fulfilling his needs for this very precious guitar to him. And was there a maker, he asked, that could help him solve this problem? And I did the Twitter equivalent of raising my hand. I tweeted back and said, I could help. And this led to me flying down to Los Angeles, uh, meeting Eric, having a lovely cup of tea in his house and finding out what problems he needed to solve. And so that is what we are doing in the cave today. We are solving Eric Idle's problem by building him a guitar case. Now, when you start to watch this cut, you'll notice my hair changes, and it's because I was an idiot and went and got a haircut in the middle of this shoot. Continuity error, don't worry about it. And by the way, YouTube tip, cut your intro last. It always works better that way. Here we go. All right. I have literally just arrived back on the plane from Los Angeles. What a lovely, lovely visit. Um, they say don't meet your heroes, but I'm living proof that occasionally it can be awesome. Wow, we had tea and conversation and heard lots of amazing stories and saw many, many beautiful guitars of which this is just one. Um, and I thought about this a lot on the plane. And despite uh, Eric's desire to maybe modify this case, I don't think it's modifiable. I think I'm gonna have to build one from scratch. Maybe you already knew that I was gonna do that, but I certainly didn't, but I have a plan. I worked up a plan in a notebook on the plane. Um, and get this, I'm gonna do it out of sailcloth since I've got a lot of sailcloth from making sailcloth bags. It'll be indestructible. <sighs> but uh, I leave for New Zealand like tomorrow. So uh, in order to get this done before Eric leaves for Australia, I. This is genuinely a one day build. It may happen over two days, but this is, I gotta finish this in less than eight hours of building. So here we go. There's me butchering a guitar. All right. Uh, First things first, I'm going to design the inside of this first, which means I'm going to build the foam that surrounds this and protects it before I build the case that goes around it. So luckily, because I'm me, I have a whole crap ton of foam upstairs. And this looks like, I guess, I guess I don't, I don't need that. All right, so let's see here. That is just about the right amount of foam. Look at that. 13 inches. That's what we'll do. Now I'm gonna bring out a tool which I love, which is my foam carving tool with a foot so that it cuts nice and square. This is literally the perfect tool for this job I'm about to do, which is to cut foam that I want to cut square. Dude, how about that? What Eric wants to do is not to check this guitar. This is a case for putting it in the overhead bin. So it needs to remain compact. It needs to remain lightweight, but when people shove their crap in on top, it needs to not harm the guitar. So between some foam and some uh, aircraft plywood, I think I can achieve both of those things. I'm going to uh, glue these two pieces of foam to each other using Foam Fast 74, specifically made for doing exactly this. Then I'm going to trace the guitar shape out of here and cut it out, and then this will be my foam 
liner for the case. Should provide some really good side protection for this bad boy. And it's only gonna be about an inch, inch and three quarters wider than the original small guitar case. Oh yeah, this is good. This is sticky. satisfying. our baby. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's the trick right there. That is the shizzle. Look at this. It's like a pin screen. Guitar, guitar shape, boop. <laughs> it like that all right oh right 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 the guitar right out like that okay we're we're in the room I'm I'm getting pleased with how this is going uh, I think I could even drop that down just the tiniest bit I'm going to do some gluing I need to already put fur into this I'm gonna line it with fur I'm gonna line it with fur that I bought for Totoro. Ha! How's that for throughput? I'm pretty psyched about that. All right. This fur 
It turned out not to be great for Totoro. I wish you could feel how soft it is. It's so soft. It doesn't work for Totoro, but it's perfect for this. I don't have to be too exacting on this because I can trim after the fact. I just have to get close. All right, well, let's try it. Let's give it a shot. I'm not sure if this is gonna work the way I hope it's gonna work because I haven't worked with fur like this and it's not about getting it to adhere to the foam, that's easy. It's actually getting it to line up correctly. That's the tricky part, like edges that meet, are they gonna peel up? What's gonna happen there? That's problematic, right? That's where I'm nervous. That's where I kind of want to go to felt instead of this. Wait a minute, I might have some felt. I did have some felt and I prefer the felt. It's got more body to it and it's gonna be easier to glue. Plus, this came from an old pool table of mine. Okay, so I'm very pleased about that. Let's see what we can do here. All right, we'll use the underside. The one that wasn't fondled by dozens of pool players. I forgot I had this. I thought I'd used up all my pool table felt. All right. The trick with lining something in cloth is often it can hide a lot of your building crimes. But when you're working with something like fur, it can add a whole bunch and that's not okay. I want this to look really nice. I want it to look like a happy home for this guitar. It's gonna travel around the world. It's a lovely, lovely piece, isn't it? That's, that's the prettier side. stick yet. Oh, come on. Contact cement is one of those things when you get it the correct amount of dry and then it sticks to itself. Well, what's so great about it is nothing will tear it apart. What's so terrible about it is nothing will tear it apart. Yeah, so you got to be really, really careful. Uh, I am going to use the backside of this. Pleased, very pleased, cautiously optimistic.
the real trick with this kind of stuff is making sure the adhesive does not wrinkle, but also that you've hidden, again, hidden your crimes. Oh. This will sit down inside this. Uh, so I'm wrapping over the edge, so I don't have any exposed edges of felt. Uh, and I also don't have any places where I can see glue. That is really important to me, to maintain the illusion that there is no glue going on. You can't let two sides of contact cement get too dry. That is really bad. There we go. What I'm hoping to do, I guess, by the end of today is to get all my fabric mostly cut out. And then tomorrow, it's all about the sewing of it together. Good. All right. I'm happy with that. That is nice. We are bearing down upon this. Here's what's happening now. That's the top of where the guitar goes. That's the bottom of where the guitar goes. I now need to line the sides and that's where... No. I have a couple pieces of fabric somewhere really nearby that I will line the sides with. But first I have to mask off uh, a bunch of this in order to be able to get access to it because I want to be able to spray my glue right up to this edge. And that means it's going to get sticky. Those of you who are looking at this thinking, you should have worn a respirator for this. You're totally right. <sighs> Give me a second, I'm gonna put on a respirator. I don't mean to set a bad example. I'm just impatient. All right. really important that I've gotten the detail of that top lip really tight because if I haven't it's gonna be harder to fix later there we go there's a part that's missing yeah that's good 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 a little more there all the way around good 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 going and inspecting the edge you're about to join with glue I can't overstate how smart it is all right, so here we go.
This is definitely the most complicated part of the whole operation because once I finish this, the outer case is literally a perimeter, which is like a fence of a constant width and a top and a bottom. And the top and the bottom are the same shape. So I'm going to cut the outside of the top and bottom out of sailcloth and the perimeter. Then there's going to be some broadcloth for padding. Uh, then there's going to be uh, perhaps a piece of aircraft ply in the lid to sit and protect on top of the guitar. Uh, and then underneath that, well, I think it actually might be a little more felt, right, on the lid. On the underside, it's actually probably gonna be glued to this, right? So this will go in and it'll get glued all the way around. Um, yeah. So the sewing, the sewing part is going to be technically complex because there's a lot of things to do. Like I got to put a handle in before I sew it together. I got to get the zipper right and all that, but it's a really straightforward shape and it'll be pretty comfortable for him to carry around the airport and not much heavier than this one, I think. This is the phrase that is etched on Eric's guitar. Futuraris, Futuaris Nisi Eresis Redibus which means I'm if they can't take a joke. Are we gonna bleep that? I have no idea. All right, uh, come on over here, Freddie. So uh, let's give more space over here, but I'm going to want to rivet this onto the case. All right. So would you, and you may have to make this just a little bit bigger. What I'd like to do is I'd like to etch a hole in each corner like that, mm -hmm. and then etch a line that does that. Okay, I see what you're going for. You see what I'm, you got nice me? fancy little yeah. plaque. Yes, fancy pants, all of yes. All right. Thank you, sir. You. Perfect. I'm going to start attaching, and uh, this is a very fraught operation because everything I'm dealing with is sticky. Uh, in order to keep stuff away, I'm gonna start pinning it away with uh, some skewers. Um, little wooden things like Popsicle sticks, tongue depressors, and wooden skewers are invaluable in a shop. If you have any kind of maker space at all, I almost have no, I don't care what you do, you have a utility for a supply of some sticks because you can stick stuff on them to paint, you can hold stuff away, you can pick at stuff. I use this for masking. Uh, you just, there's so many uses. Get thee some skewers. Okay. Uh, now. This is working out better than I had any right to believe that it would. Oh my God, if this looks satisfying to you, you have no idea how good it feels to me. <laughs> you know, I've lined a lot of cases in felt. It feels like all that practice is paying off right now. Oh, yeah. Right? I just heard Gunther exhale, right? Like he films a lot of this crap and he just went, ha oh. <laughs> ha. It is weird to think that <laughs> two hours ago I was in LA talking to one of my heroes. And now I'm working on his guitar case. That is awesome. Goes down here, sits like that. And then this goes over here. Socks down into here. It's not gonna be perfect just yet, but it'll be close. 
Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Guitar. and gentlemen, that, that is, I'm really, I'm really pleased with that. I should have included a space here for the base. I may end up gluing a piece of felt over here and here along this leading edge just to, so that as Eric takes this out and puts it back, he doesn't have to worry about it peeling this back, but that is a small matter. The big matter is that this guitar now has a home and we've done all the interior design. It's now time to build the outside of the house. Yep. Yep. Excellent. Can you cut some dramatic theme music here? Here we go. I don't want to leave those little tabs I was talking about for later. I'm going to do them right now. Um. Yep, that's it. See that? That just now slides right in. Yep, and so does that. Just slides right past. Not gonna peel it up or anything. Oh, okay. Let's start measuring and cutting some fabric. I am very pleased with this thus far. I think this is a suitable, a suitable interior for such an important object. I'm just gonna enjoy doing this a little bit here. I need two pieces of cloth for the outside. Should I use the number? I think I'm gonna stick with white. I'm gonna stick with straight white.
All of my cloth is cut out for the outer shell of this guitar case. It is ready to sew. It is ready to sew together. However, it is late in the day that started very early this morning. So I'm gonna clean up here, go to sleep, and come back tomorrow fresh as a daisy. It's a brand new day. I've been thinking all night, uh, and I'm ready to sew the outer covering. But the outer covering has uh, some features to it that have to be installed before I sew it together. Right? Uh, on, in one sense, the outer covering is simply a top, a bottom, and a side sewn together. Uh, but there's a zipper in the side, so I have to install the zipper first. Then there's a handle on the opposite side of the zipper. I have to install that as well. Uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of a pocket uh, on the top. So all those three things have to be installed before I start to assemble the outside of this bag. That's what I'm doing now. The zipper itself will go from here all the way around to there. So I think the zipper is going to be a 54 inch deal, but let's say 56 inches so I can bury it. That means the handle side is 29 and a half equals 29.5 finished. That means it's got yeah, folded over edges. And the handle, the handle itself, wait, let me make sure I measured that correctly. 29 and a half, I did. Okay, so the handle center itself is 18 and a half. Boy, I hope that's close to 29 and a half. Let's see here. It is, glory be. Okay. Great, so it from here to there. Okay. This is the handle center, and that's right. That's what I want out of that. I kind of almost want to just sew that, just like that. Yep, yep. All right, uh, time to do some actual assembly. Assembly. Great, very happy with that. I'm also gonna finish this seam while I'm here. with that. The zipper side. The sail, Eric, has already spent 10 years surfing the oceans of the world. I often say this, but you know, sewing involves an interesting mode of thinking. Like you have to think upside down and backwards. And funnily enough, mold making is the same thing. Both of them involve <laughs> thinking of your pro project upside down and backwards the whole time you're working with the process of sewing and with the process of mold making. I wonder if mold makers make good sewists or tailors. I don't know. 
By the way, I don't have an innate sense of how to do all this stuff all the time. I actually called up my uh, bag collaborator, Marcos, uh, to come over this morning and walk me through how to attach a zipper again. I needed a little bit of a primer. I'm pretty optimistic about it. That looks great. <laughs> wow, that looks like I knew what I'm doing. Amazing. Okay, I'm super psyched about that. That is awesome. Uh, right, if this is the back side, that's exactly how that goes. So that's where the zipper will end. And then, right, I'm gonna do that and then fold it over and do a second stitch. Okay. And then I'll trim this down to that width. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this is asking a lot of it. Here we go. This and comes around too. Here's the mark. Well, the mark doesn't matter. What matters is the actual. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, look at that. See, I'm kind of, I'm kind of close. All right. Yep. That's gonna be. Yeah. After all of this sewing I've been doing this year, I'm starting to notice that I'm actually getting better. <sighs> Good. Okay, so if this is a bag, if this is a dimensional pocket that has that business going on. do it like that, right? Here, and cr comes down here, it crushes the top to hold it tight. That keeps things from falling out. That's the goal! It's the goal of a thing that holds things. Keep them from falling out. get into your bag. So now I need to mount this to the top. About like that. Oh, that's why that wasn't square, because it wasn't the same measurement.
<laughs> I made a pocket that holds stuff. Woo! That feels like an accomplishment. Okay, we're barreling down on this. Now that I've got the pocket attached to this, it's time to sew this puppy around its perimeter so that I can then get around to the business of sewing it to the edge. I've also included in here, I, in order to protect the top of Eric's guitar, I have sailcloth, broadcloth, a beautiful piece of aircraft plywood. This is like seven ply and it's less than an eighth of an inch thick. A second piece of broadcloth and then the pool felt. That is suitable protection to deal with Aussie flights. I'm saying nothing disparaging about Aussies whatsoever. You know I love your country. here, right like there, and then coming all the way, yeah, coming all the way around, following that stitch, yep. This is the hardest engineering of the whole thing, this last little bit here. Might not look perfect on the inside, but it'll still be good enough. Oh, right, now I need the zipper tongue again. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Here we go. We're doing really, really well. I'm very pleased with how this is going. The zipper is in, and the question is, right, I wanna get this all the way around to this. Oh, and I'm gonna need to jump it. I am gonna need to jump it. Okay, I'm glad I checked. It's a classic move by me that the, that I just didn't allow enough seam. It all comes down to this little stitch here, and I gotta get some pins in so that I can actually. My. Oh, the sailcloth is so hard to drive pins through, it's crazy. This is the very definition of what they call rough, <laughs> rough around the edges. But I am confident in its mechanical properties such that I'm not taking that on the chin. 
It's a testament to my lack of sewing ability to be able to think through finishing all these little tiny seams, but like I said, I do think I'm getting better. Now I'm in the home stretch, I really want to take care with each of these little last operations so that I don't end up putting a hole through something that takes me another couple of hours to finish. All right, that might have been part of it. Part of it! Oh, I know that if you're like a, a genuine tailor, sewer, seamster, you're watching me being like, oh, Adam, if you only knew the one little bangity bank step to take. And I know, I know, I just haven't learned to think through that stuff just like that just yet. But I'm close. Okay. You know, it's hard to overstate how important Monty Python was to me when I was a kid. Uh, it came to the U.S. on PBS, and aside from the fact that all of a sudden, occasionally there were boobs on PBS, which blew my freaking mind, it was the first time I shared like an open belly laugh with my parents about the same thing, right? It's like not we weren't we weren't sharing that laugh on two levels; we were enjoying that laugh together. And that made me feel connected to my parents and like adult-like in a really specific way. And there's a way in which the absurdity of Python was so equalizing. It's so incredible. I've been lucky enough to meet uh, and interview John Cleese. I had dinner once with Terry Jones many, a few years ago, and also uh, the inimitable Ken Plume once arranged a breakfast with me and Terry Gilliam. So I've been lucky enough to tell most of the pythons how much they meant to me. This bag is just another way I'm doing the same thing. Are you ready to stop making that mistake? Yes, I am. That's it, I didn't make that mistake again. Here we go. All right. Okay, so now, now, now this is, <laughs> this is, well, this is where it gets complicated. <clears throat> ah, right, okay, so this is the bottom. And first I want to, yeah, first I'm just going to sew it up its edges so I don't have to worry about bunching. Here we go. All right, we're just gonna button this all the way around and hope it stays together when I start manhandling this on the sewing machine. This type of engineering, this, uh, this marriage between hard parts and soft parts, between 
stiff and flexible. It is, uh, it's really intense. It is a very, very interesting and difficult kind of engineering. But I am, uh, I'm really fascinated by it. See, I'm sewing this bag inside out. And then later, I will open the zipper and like a magic trick, hopefully. <laughs> I say hopefully because boy, it sucks to pull a dead rabbit out of a hat. I'm sure there's a punk rock magician around who does that, but that's not really my gag. All right, now how to sew this? Your guess is as good as mine, but I think it involves something like this. I mean, it's not this, is it? Could it? Wow, actually, that's not so bad. That's, that's better than lifting this thing. All right, let's try that. Okay, that should be within my seam allowance. Let's, let's set this. You know what? Check this again. All right, I'm gonna just crack it open and just feel around. <laughs> All right, this is the moment of truth where we turn this puppy inside out and see if it conforms to our expectations. Uh -huh. See what I did there? All right. Uh, please, 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 please fit. Please work. color me one relieved Irishman right now that wait oh yep handles a little farther forward than I wanted it to be but that's okay that's a that's a it's lightweight it's protected that's aircraft ply there you can put your stuff on top of it it's not gonna mess up Eric's guitar go ahead try the pocket holds stuff Wow, that's a strong Velcro. I'm asking a lot of an old man. <sighs> All right. There are a few finishing touches to put on, like a back strap, but uh, that's just gonna take me a couple minutes. But the fit, the fit, the fit works. <sighs> I'm very pleased. I'll try and do some cleanup of that. I know, I know it's ugly. I'm very happy.
Now this attachment for the back straps, there's other ways of doing this, but I am copying Eric's guitar case exactly because he said he really liked wearing it around <clears throat> on his back in the arrangement that it was. So I am holding to that for the most part. Oh. And those can't stretch, okay. Do I have one? Right, right, right. I have this thing. Actually, that's kind of great. That's, that I like. Okay. So let's do that. It rigidifies it and legitimizes it. Okay, so here we go. This is the hardest tape there is to pull the backing up, but it's worth it because it's the most tenacious tape there is in the world. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go, that's good. Much nicer. I mean, you know, a little crunchy, but nicer. Uh, right, and I wanted to add one rivet, not there, but here, where I couldn't get the sewing machine to cooperate. Great. Yep, that's not gonna go anywhere. Okay. All right, it's time for the final assembly. All right, Eric, the next time you see this guitar, it'll be in person. It's been such a pleasure to work on this. Some of the best seven hours I've spent in the last couple of weeks. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, and so we can try this out. All right, now the guitar case heads back to its home in LA. Thank you, Adam, and partners. That's fantastic. Thank you to Kristen for organizing absolutely. all of yes, it. And absolutely. And to Roman for bringing it down. <laughs> yes, thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. I'm just very excited. That is one of a kind. It's no just one of a kind. Like that, it's ever. Special. I'm very, very excited and very happy. And I'm going to walk into my car. Mm. I'm going to take this and I'm going to try it out tonight with Weird Al and uh, Tom Kenny and a few other people at Bobcat Goldthwaite's a uh, charity for Mr. Crimmins, his wife, widow. So that's going to work tonight. And thank you. And uh, there you are.